Hello and welcome to this presentation on quadratic equations. Uh, this video is just going to be an introduction to quadratic equations, sort of what they are, what they look like, and we'll look at solving some very, very simple ones, which should sort of demonstrate why it gets much more complicated to solve them as they become more complicated. Uh, if you'd like to just skip to learning how to solve them, you already know what a quadratic equation is, then those videos are available and you can feel free to just skip this one and move on to those. Um, if not though, uh, let's just let's learn about quadratic equations. So a quadratic equation is actually pretty simple. All it is is an equation in which your variable, usually x, the greatest power that your variable is raised to is 2. And um, you can have powers of x lower than that, so you can have just a normal x, and you can have just normal numbers. So this could be, I don't know, a 10 or something. And then uh, to, be a, to be an equation, it needs to have an equal sign, so it needs to equal something. Um, and it can have any of these elements on the other side of the equal sign because you can just use algebra to move them to either side. Um, so for the sake of this example, I'm just going to put a regular number over there, like uh, 23. It could be anything. Uh, this 23 could be anything. This 10 could be anything. Uh, this x squared or this x could have coefficients in front of them. So this could be like a 10x squared and like a 5x or whatever you want. And that's pretty much it. That's your quadratic equation. The only thing you have to be careful about is if you have powers of x greater than 2. So if we add like an x cubed in here, x raised to the power 3, then that's not okay. That's no longer a quadratic equation. And so the strategies that you'd be using to solve quadratic equations aren't going to aren't going to help you because it's not a quadratic equation. So just watch out for for that. Um there will be times when you will have powers of x greater than 2, and you will be using uh, quadratic uh, methods, I guess you could call them. But uh, that's kind of beyond what we're talking about right now, so uh, just don't really worry about it. Think about it as uh, you, the highest power that your variable is raised to is 2, and you have a quadratic equation. So let's solve some very, very simple... Well, let's look at solving one very, very simple quadratic equation. So let's just do, like x squared, let's see, how about minus 10 equals um, 39. Okay, now this can be solved pretty easily, okay, there's nothing too complicated here. We just kind of add 10 to both sides, and now we have x squared equals 49. Okay, from here it seems pretty simple. We just take the square root of both sides. And we get x, we've isolated x, uh, equals square root of 49. Well, that would be 7. So there we go. We found 7 as a uh, solution to the quadratic equation. Something to keep in mind, when, whenever I say solution or solving a quadratic equation, that just means finding an x, a number for x, that will work. Sometimes it can get uh, a little bit confusing, so it's important to keep that straight, that all you're doing is trying to find a value of x that makes the equation true. So 7 will indeed work. If you plug 7 back in here, you get 7 squared 49, minus 10, you get 39. But there is a little snag. There's a little thing you have to worry about. And that's that we need to observe that x equals negative 7. That's a pretty ugly 7, but x equals negative 7 is also a solution to this equation. Uh, the reason for this is that negative 7 times negative 7, we have a negative times a negative, so we get a positive. So what that means is that positive 7 squared equals negative 7 squared. Okay? So already we're beginning to see why quadratic equations are kind of tricky, because you have two solutions because of the x squared. Uh, 
Now this seems okay, this doesn't seem too bad. All we had to do is find one solution, and the other solution was just the negative of that. But that only works in this case because we don't have this middle x. Okay, if we, uh, squaring a positive number is the same as squaring a negative number. That's, we, we demonstrated that over here. But adding a negative number is not the same as adding a positive number. This middle x isn't squared, so we're just adding it. It's just like adding a number. And like I said, adding a positive number is not the same as adding a negative number. So it gets more tricky. Um, let's look at a, uh, let's see, okay, here's, here's a quadratic equation, and I'm, uh, this is much more complicated, and I'm just going to kind of tell you the answers, but, um, uh, let's see, 3x squared plus 7x minus 10 equals 0, okay? Here's a quadratic equation. Obviously much more complicated than this simple one. It has uh, x squareds, normal x's, as well as normal numbers. Um, so it's much more complicated to solve. You will learn how to solve them in a later video, but I'm just going to tell you the answers to kind of demonstrate how, um, how tricky they are. Okay, the first answer is just x equals 1. Okay, that's not too hard to see. Because if we plugged x equals 1 into our equation, we're going to have 3 times 1 squared. I suppose I can write this. 3 times 1 squared plus 7 times 1 minus 10. All right? 1 squared is just 1, so 3 times 1 is 3, plus 7 times 1 is just 7. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. Okay, so that works. X equals 1 work, works. But notice that if we used x equals negative 1, that doesn't work. Because, yeah, we'd have a positive 3 here, but this 7 would be negative. So we'd have a positive 3 minus 7, which is uh, negative 4, minus 10, negative 14. That's not 0. So it's not just negative 1. Believe it or not, the other solution is x equals negative 10 over 3. Okay, I'll leave it to you to go ahead and plug that back in to make sure it works, but I'll tell you right now that it does. But what I'm demonstrating here is that this is, these are very different answers. Uh, x equals negative uh, 10 thirds is the same as like, uh, what would that be, negative 3.3, .3, repeating of course, would be the, uh, decimal equivalent. So all, all I'm demonstrating here is that 1 and negative 3.333 repeating seem like very very different numbers but they both solve this quadratic equation. So all I'm trying to show is that th this gets very complicated. So it's not always as easy as it was here. There's one more thing I want to talk about before you can go off to learning how to solve these more complicated ones. Um, and that's that the number of solutions that a quadratic equation has uh, can sometimes vary. So, for instance, w with this one up here, and also this one, we had two solutions. So a quadratic equation can have two solutions. Okay, that would be if we have, like, you know, x squared equals 9. Okay, x equals positive 3 and x equals negative 3 are the two solutions there. It can have one solution. Okay, that's if we have like an x squared equals zero. Okay, you can't have a negative zero. So the only solution to this is x equals zero. Um, and quadratic equations can also have no solutions or zero solutions. And that's when we have something like x squared equals a negative number, so like negative four or something, um, because any number squared gives you a positive number. So there are no solutions to x squared equals negative 4. There are kind of solutions, but don't really worry about that. For now, just think about it as this is, you can have two solutions, one solution, or no solutions.
Okay, and that's about it. That's all I wanted to talk about in this introduction to quadratic equations. So next you're ready to move on and learn how to solve these yourself. So there are three different methods uh, that uh, you can use to solve quadratic equations. The first one that I would suggest you learn is called the quadratic formula. Now this is a formula which lets you plug in, in a sense, any quadratic equation, and it will tell you the answers. It'll tell you uh, what x has to equal. So um, that's pretty much it. It's not always the prettiest answer. In fact, most of the time it's not. <laughs> but it'll always work, okay? As long as there's a solution, um, then then it'll tell you the solution. It'll tell you both solutions if you have two solutions. So it's a very nifty little formula, though it doesn't always give you the best answer. But the answers are always correct, so yeah. The next way is called factoring. Factoring um, will only work for select few quadratic equations. So it won't work like the quadratic formula. It won't work for any uh, quadratic equation, but it will work for some, and when it works, it works very well. It produces much nicer answers than the quadratic formula, and um, it can also just be useful to learn how to factor quadratic equations because it can be helpful uh, for other things that you end up doing uh, with with just math in general. So it's very good to learn factoring. The last way is called completing the square. Um, it's a little bit like factoring, though not quite. Um, and it'll give you okay answers. I, I guess it gives you pretty good answers. It's a little bit more difficult than uh, the other two, I think. It really requires you to actually, like, think. Though <laughs> you do have to think to do factoring. You don't really have to think to do the quadratic formula, because it's just a formula. But you'll see that in the quadratic formula video. So yeah. Uh, all of these should have annotations at this point, so you can just click on whichever one you'd like to go learn about. If you're not familiar with any of these, I'd suggest starting with the quadratic formula, um, and then moving to factoring, and then completing the square. And I think that's a logical and useful progression. If you're already familiar with the quadratic formula, you can move on to factoring. If you're already familiar with factoring, move straight to completing the square. Kind of do whatever you want, but I suggest that you start with the quadratic formula and then factoring and then completing the square. And also that's what the videos are going to assume. So the factoring video is going to assume that you know the quadratic formula. The completing the square video is going to assume that you know factoring and the quadratic formula. And I guess the quadratic formula assumes that you've seen this video, but I guess you have if you got this far. <laughs> so just click on whichever one you'd like to start with. Uh, or learn about, I suggest you start with the quadratic formula and um, go ahead and get going on that. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in another one. Thanks.